tutorial, we're going to learn to knit the cowl that I'm wearing right now. We'll give you a picture here as well. It's called the Matterhorn and it's designed by Mari Chiba and she's given us directions for both the cowl and the scarf in one pattern. It's a cable pattern and it looks really difficult and it's really not. There, it looks like there are all kinds of things going on, but really most of the pattern is just knitting the knits and purling the purls. So it ends up going really quickly and cowls are so popular right now, which means that it ends up being a great gift for holidays coming up or whatever else. This is knit with Louette Gems yarn which is really ideal for this pattern. The plies are, the, the yarn is plied and the plies are twisted and the twist on the plies of this yarn are so perfect for really making cable stitches pop and show um, in the work, really pretty. Not only that, but this is a 100% merino yarn, which means it's really soft and it's really nice to work with. Every stitch is just so nice when you're working with such a nice yarn and it's super wash meaning it's easy to care for if you want to machine wash it. The, uh, the last thing about this yarn so great is that it comes in 31 different colors and the whole palette is really understated and sophisticated so really any color you choose in this yarn is going to make a beautiful cowl or a beautiful scarf. This is um, not finished but here is part of the scarf and the cowl we have going on here. Um, You'll need to, uh, to knit this, you'll need straight or circular needles. You have to use circular needles for the cowl. You can use circular or straight for the scarf. You'll need your yarn and your pattern. I'll give you a link here to my website while I, I list out all the materials you need and give you a link to the pattern. Um, you'll also want some stitch markers if you're knitting the cowl to separate the pattern repeats. And before you get started, I really highly recommend knitting a swatch. The pattern has us um, knitting the swatch in garter stitch, which means knitting every row. Um, the pattern lists a needle size. I made, I started doing a little swatch in the needle size and realized that my gauge was too small. So I went up a needle size and ended up getting the correct gauge. Just so you know, if there's different people knit in different tensions and so changing the needle size to get the correct gauge is it's important to do that and it's kind of a normal thing you don't always end up knitting as uh, in the exact same tension as the pattern designer uh, to knit this I would say it's about advanced beginner level you need to know how to knit and purl and I'm going to cover everything else here in the tutorial for you so get your yarn get your pattern and we will start with the cast on next The two trickiest parts of working either the cowl or the scarf um, Matterhorn pattern it are going to be reading the chart and working the cable twists. I'm going to take care of all of that right here, right now, make it really easy for you. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the chart. This is just a little piece of the chart, just enough for us to focus on to be able to, um, to learn what we need to learn. We're going to talk about working the scarf first. Now if you've never read a chart before, all right side rows, this is for most charts that you see, all right side rows are going to be odd numbered and you're going to read them this way. All even numbered, all wrong side rows will be even numbered and you'll read them this way. And it's no different in this pattern. If you're working the scarf, you're going to work this entire um, this entire chart, that is a scarf chart, all of this. And this is what it's going to look like. You'll cast on the number the pattern tells you to. Uh, each box is a stitch. So you start with, this is knit, 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 and then purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl. You see this red line here? This is actually a repeat within the chart. So you'll um, do this little outside part in garter stitch and then this bit between the red lines is repeated five times. So it's purl purl knit knit purl purl once, purl purl knit knit purl purl twice, three, four, five, then you move on to the rest of the chart and work your way across. Then on the wrong side row, this right here with the dot on the wrong side is a knit. So it's knit 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 knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, all the way across to get to the red line again, and then this is repeated five times, 
and then on to the last three knit stitches. And then row three starts from this direction again. It takes some practice, but I think you'll find that once you get an eye for it, once you see what you're doing, I mean, once you, you'll have your knitting in front of you, which will make this whole thing make more sense to you after you, you spend a lot of time or just very carefully look at the chart and, you, and do the, knit sti the stitches it requires, then after a few rows, it becomes really easy to see what's what and how it's working. And that's how you build your chart reading skills, which makes a lot of knitting really easy. Um, so these are all just knit and pearls, and you're working on the scarf all the way across. If you are working the cowl, you see this green line here. This is the repeat for the cowl. So you start here and you work all the way across and you only work to here. These last three stitches are only for the scarf. But just like with the, with the scarf, you work this and the bit between the red lines is repeated five times before you work across. And because we're knitting the cowl in the round, you read all charts this way, all rows this way. Row one is read this way, row two is read this way, row three is read this way. Um, because you never see the wrong side of the work. So you'll start with this, repeat this five times, work across. Once you get here, you go to um, row two, which is here, and work all the way across to here. Go to row three, da da da, da da da. So let's uh, cover this again. All 27 stitches shown here are what you use for the scarf. Just the ones in the green box are used in the cowl. And the ones between the red lines, all those stitches are repeated five times in both the cowl and the scarf. Now, that, I that covers pretty much everything in this part of the key. These here are the cable stitches. These being the little cable stitches and this being the big cable stitch. And in row five, you'll see here we have a cable stitch and a cable stitch that is directly translated to what you see down here. And this is the other cable stitch, and it doesn't show on this little bit of the, the, the chart that I have here. It, it comes up somewhere in here. It's easy enough to follow. Um, I'm gonna show you how to work these first. This one with the dot over here to the left is one half RC, and it says slip next two stitches to cable needle and hold in back of work, knit one, purl two from cable needle. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I am going to demonstrate this using a much bulkier yarn than the pattern calls for just because it's easier to see. You'll also need a cable needle. Cable needles come in very different shapes and sizes. I like to use these wooden ones because they have a nice grip to them that are a little bit thinner in the center so they're good at hanging on to stitches. Okay. I'm going to work up to the spot where the cable starts. Those are the first three stitches. And then I'm ready to start my cable right here. So the first one that I have here is slip two stitches to cable needle and hold in back of work. Cable stitches look twisted because they are. So I slid those two to the cable needle and I hold in the back of the work. Now I just let those hang there because I'm going to knit one and then purl two from the cable needle. Because it's purl, I want my needle up here in front and I want my yarn in front and I'll purl two. Okay, that is that one finished. The next one Let's pull this back in. That was this one here. Now we're going to do this one, which says slip next stitch to cable needle and hold in front of work, purl two, knit one from cable needle. So these two cable stitches are right back to back and I'll show you what they look like when they finish close up. So I slip this next stitch to cable needle and hold in front of work, purl two, knit one from the cable needle. 
and then I'm going to finish these last few stitches. It's usually a bit hard to see exactly how the twists look until you have worked a few rows from it, but we've created a twist which is going to end up looking like this here. Isn't that pretty? Okay, the next cable twist is the big one. I'll show you how to work this. It's done over ribbing, and it's this long one here. It says slip next to slip next six stitches oh my gosh try to say that fast slip next six stitches to cable needle and hold to back of work knit one purl one three times knit one purl one three times from cable needle so i have this little sample here i will work these edge edge stitches And I have my cable needle where I'm slipping six stitches by the seashore. <laughs> Two, four, six, and hold in the back of the work. And now I'm going to knit the knits and purl the purls as I see them. Six times. Knit, purl, knit. Pearl, knit, pearl. And then I have to work the stitches from the cable needle. Now make sure not to twist it when you do this. Just pull it over. This is a little bit tricky because it's a lot more of a twist, a lot more to pull over. The first stitch is going to be a knit. The first few times you do this, you'll kind of wish you had an extra hand to hold on to everything. Knit, purl, knit, purl. Knit, purl. You see here, that is definitely twisted. There's no mistake that we've twisted the stitches there. And right after you work it, you'll see that it kind of scrunches in on itself. But after a few rows, that evens out, and after blocking even more, and your cable ends up looking like this, a big ribbed twist. Those are the basics for reading the chart and working the cable twists. In the next video, we're going to talk about casting on for the cowl and how all of it comes together. Okay, so we talked about how to work the cable twists and how to read the chart, which is really going to be the most difficult part of working this. The, um, the scarf and the cowl are, are worked differently in that the scarf is just worked flat and worked back and forth and you can either use circulars or straight needles for that and the cowl is knit in the round so I want to be sure to cover all the points on how to get that to work for you. The first thing you'll need to knit the cowl is you'll definitely need circular needles since it's knit in the round and the cast on number is a big number and so you want to be sure to leave yourself enough yarn to be able to do the long tail cast on for this and a trick that I like to do is to um, Leave myself like a six inch tail, because I always leave a little extra, and wrap the yarn around the needle. And each wrap is enough yarn for one stitch cast on. So if you wrap this 25 times, let's say, and we'll pretend that's 25. So if that's enough to cast on 25, that's enough to cast on 50, 75, 100, and then you can put your slip knot there and cast on the number from there. Now that I've made a mess of this, let me tidy this up. You'll end up having a little bit extra yarn that way, which ends up being okay. Um, if it's better to waste a few inches of yarn rather than starting from zero again when you're casting on over 100 stitches at once. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. 
here I am using the beautiful Louette Gems yarn. And I just did the long tail cast on for this. I like to do, whoops, I have it backwards. I like to do the long tail cast on this way. You can also do it the slingshot method. Um, they're both the same. I'll give you a link here to my video where um, I show how to do the cast on the way I like to do it. So you see here I have a lot of stitches cast on. And I want to show you how to get this joined in the round without twisting it. And that's what I'm doing right now is I'm, I set the needles out in front of me with the whole number cast on and I want to line it up so all of the, the knots from the cast on are inside the loop, okay? I want it to get this close to the needle tips as well because I'm going to be um, knitting it here pretty soon and I want it to be close to the tips. Okay, that looks like it's not twisted. I want to get it set up so that my working yarn is coming over here from the needle on the right side. And my first stitch will be here on the left. Everything still looks good. I'm going to take a stitch marker and put it on this first needle, or the right needle, and then just start knitting. And the pattern has us start with garter stitch, which when you're knitting in the round is going to be knit a row, purl a row. And Mari has us ending after a purl row. Okay, you can see here I am still not twisted. Everything looks good. I have the stitch marker that marks the beginning of the round. And after I work, um, after I work my five rows of, my five rounds of garter stitch, I'll start here with the first stitch in the pattern and work across just in the green box, remember, remembering to repeat this five times. And after I, I do one repeat of the pattern, I want to place another marker. There's going to be three repeats of this whole pattern around in the cowl, and it really helps you stay on track if you have a marker between each um, pattern repeat in the section. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the cowl, and this here is one pattern repeat and it goes around three times throughout there. And when I was knitting this, I had markers here and here to mark those and help me stay on track. And if you're knitting the scarf, you pull this back in, it is just one repeat. And remember the scarf repeat is the whole chart from here to here. Now a lot of this, um, even though this looks really complicated, one thing that makes this pattern really easy is that most of it is just knitting the knits and purling the purls, meaning stay, you're going to stay in pattern. You have these garter stitch areas here, which are um, uh, always knit from both sides in the scarf and knit and purled in the, um, in the cowl, which you just follow your pattern to stay up with that. But there's something I want to show you about recognizing knit stitches and purl stitches. If you're not good at this, it's going to help you with pretty much everything you knit. Um, because knitting the knits and purling the purls is something that a lot of patterns use to keep things um, looking the same throughout the pattern. When you see a stitch like this that looks like a V, these are knit stitches. And when you see something that looks like it has a little scarf around its neck, this is a purl stitch. So if you're working along and your pattern is telling you to knit the knits and purl the purls, when you come across a stitch with a little scarf around its neck, you purl it because that's a purl stitch. And if you come across a stitch that looks like a V, you knit it because that's a knit stitch. This is a uh, a roving yarn. You can see here, I like to use this to show um, specific stitches because it's so huge and clear. Okay. Let me see what else I have to show you. Okay, I think that's it from here. 
it is, um, you're going to finish your, if you're knitting the cowl, you're going to finish uh, the repeats for the cowl and you're going to work more garter stitch and bind off. Whether you're working the, actually whether you're working the scarf or the cowl, I recommend binding off using a bigger needle because especially in the cowl, you don't want a tight bind off. Um, you want this to be able to stretch over, over your head and fit nicely and not um, scrunch in. The thing you're going to notice, and I deliberately left the scarf unblocked, is you see the edges are not straight because the cable stitches have kind of pulled things in and tightened them up. But this yarn is going to block out beautifully. You're going to, um, I recommend washing it in wool soap, and I like to put things into the spin cycle on the washer afterwards to spin out the water and then set it out flat to dry. And for the scarf, um, I would put maybe a pin in next to one of, one of the, each of the, the big cable twists. That'll help stretch that out and smooth it out, and you can kind of smooth it out with your hands. And I need this needle back. For the cowl, um, when it was wet, I took two giant knitting needles and put it into the cowl like this and then set it out flat to dry like this. And that helped the whole thing dry um, in a perfect tube, <laughs> is what I'm looking for, with no scrunching in. It was easier than using a bunch of pins to try to pin it out correctly. And it dried just like this, and the whole thing looked really good when it was finished. I think at one point, I did put like, a couple of pins in to hold these out to stretch it out a little bit. And then once it started drying, I took the pins out. Okay, I think that's everything. We talk about blocking and binding off using a bigger needle. I think, that, I think we've got everything. Really, the hardest parts of this are going to be, um, or the most difficult things to get used to are the cable twists and reading the charts, and you've got that. Anyway, many thanks to Mari Chiba for letting us use her pattern, and many thanks to Loette Yarns. Good luck. Thank you.